Disasters caused by droughts, floods, windstorms, earthquakes and other hazards take people's lives and cause widespread economic damage. Weather extremes caused some 87% of reported disasters between 1980 and 2012, whereas earthquakes, tsunamis, landslides, volcanoes, forest fires and others are responsible for the remaining 13%. Weather extremes also caused almost two-thirds of losses related to disasters and they are responsible for the greatest number of lives lost. If climate change progresses, these climate-related hazards will increase and create new risks for natural and human systems. However, natural hazards are only one factor for disasters, as disaster risk is determined by people's vulnerability during the occurrence of a natural hazard. This risk increases when people and their livelihoods are located in dangerous locations or when they are not adapted to environmental conditions. Other factors, like demographic growth and urbanization, further increase people's vulnerability when they are linked to unsustainable development. This is why disasters are essentially development failures. Reducing hazards like climate extremes and seismic activities is highly important, but very often impossible. Reducing vulnerability, on the other hand, offers a wide array of possibilities for reducing disaster risk and thereby improving the resilience of households, communities and nations. Such resilience building means to plan for, absorb, recover from and adapt to calamities. This helps both in adapting to climate change and in limiting disaster risk. Even better, it achieves these goals by reducing poverty and improving livelihoods. Financial support for disasters increased over the past decades, but most of it was dedicated to activities undertaken in the aftermath of disasters rather than reducing the risk of their occurrence. Reducing the risk of disasters before they occur has been a very low priority. Between 1991 and 2010, the international community committed over $3 trillion in aid. Of that amount, $106.7 billion were allocated to disasters. And of that amount, just a fraction of about 13% was put to use for risk reduction measures before disasters strike. This means that out of 100 US dollars spent on development aid, only 40 cents have been invested into risk reduction compared to 3 US dollars for delivering aid after a disaster. Disaster response and recovery are absolutely necessary, but disaster management could be even more effective through adopting an integrated risk management approach. Instead of dealing with each stage of the disaster cycle independently, preventing disasters can be a part of all stages of disaster management. This is possible when we have in-depth information of all hazards and vulnerabilities. Once we know what could happen and we compare that with what is allowed to happen, we can derive the necessary measures to minimize the impacts before a disaster occurs. Integrated risk management essentially provides a set of tools for successful resilience building according to the principles of sustainability. The international community agrees on the importance of integrated risk management through the Hyogo Framework for Action and its consecutive document which has just been adopted in Japan in March 2015. Safety and security are fundamental to sustainable development. The integrated risk management approach provides a very effective toolbox to reduce disaster risk, strengthen climate resilience and reduce poverty at the same time.